Have you ever debated with yourself whether or not you are a natural at writing? Whether words flow out from your mind to the paper or the digital screen with ease? If the answer is no, that's going to change right now. Because our guest on the podcast today helps her clients to apply the thought process of a writer to spark new ideas and approaches, improve their questioning and creative problem solving, and empowers them to create a life and business they enjoy. Fall in love with selling as you acquire the right mindset, selling style and sales process that helps you take your business solution to more prospects, potential clients and the world at large. If you are a women entrepreneur who is looking to get more sales, scale and sustainability in your business, you have reached the right place. I'm Roshni Baronia. Your host for the show is The Sales, which is all about helping you bring your authentic and influential self to each sales conversation. Hello, Deborah. I'm honored to welcome such a distinguished media person and award-winning author like you to my show. Welcome today. I am so incredibly happy to be here. I once worked on a project with L India long ago, and my only regret is that I never made it there. But it is such a pleasure to be talking to you today. Uh, thank you so much. And I, I invite you to India anytime in future you are here. Of course, once the pandemic finishes, please do visit us and I would love to welcome you. Oh, thank you so much. So, uh, Deborah, please tell a little bit about yourself uh, to the listeners and your work. Of course, you have got a very distinguished career. So please let the listeners know a little bit about you. Well, I, I sort of started it near the close of the corporate career when I was working for L International from the New York offices of our French company, Hachette Philippaki Media, which was sold to Hearst. I was also a brand leader of magazines like El Decor, which I believe you have in India as well. Yes, I'm yes. trying to think of the global ones and not just the US-based ones. El Decor was a magazine in the is uh, in the wonderful world of interiors, and it was just a wonderful experience to lead that brand in the U.S. And I was the publisher of Elle's teen spinoff, Elle Girl, and worked in corporate marketing. So my whole background is in the women's media world, particularly the magazine world, and it's been full of change and transition about a decade ago or just over that it looked its digital future in the eye and didn't quite know what to say next. (laughs) And that's when we really had to examine how we were going to go forward because the business model for publishing was changing so dramatically. And I became the chief innovation officer for the company, the first one. And I was responsible for changing the company internally. So like an entrepreneur and then making new digital ventures and partnerships. So I had an entrepreneurial side uh, as well. And it was a fascinating journey. But around that time, I realized things were changing so dramatically. I was soon going to not just have to reinvent the company, but reinvent myself. And it made me think about what it is I really want to do next. And, you know, like many, many people that right now are in the throes of rethinking and reinventing, we often feel stuck and just don't know which path to go down. And while all of this uncertainty was happening, I got hit with the notion to write about my very unconventional mother, who I had lost more than 20 years before. And I was an only child, basically dancing around the pedestal of a larger-than-life, otherworldly beautiful goddess. And I never quite recovered from the loss of her, even though it was so many years before, because she was really the center of my young 
universe. And that idea came to me in a flash. It's too long a story now to explain where I was and how it happened, but it hit. And once it did, I went down a creative journey path that took seven years and was a parallel path with the world of work and the book and the research. Everything was in and out of a draw for so many years until Saturday child published in April of 2019. And When it did, even though it was more terrifying than thrilling at the time, it's very scary to do this kind of of writing, especially for someone who is private and and is not used to kind of exposing themselves. There were so many twists and turns to that creative journey, but it ended up as this memoir of the real relationship between the two of us. And it transformed my life in so many ways. And it's still transforming my life that I took that step into the unknown and kind of went with the flow of something and learned all these new things. And now, just as serendipitously, it's led to my next book. But you asked me about how I got to where I am. So I won't tell you where I'm going yet. (laughs) That's the story of how I got here. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Of course, I think whoever we are today and wherever we go in our life is all a mixed up outcome of our experiences. And Truly, like you yes. said, you have such an illustrious career, like you've worked across you know, so many publications and brands and so many media publications Mm -hmm. and then mixed with your personal experiences and that blended you are now on to a very new path which is like uh, where you are helping many people to share their ideas and innovations through storytelling. Yes well what ended up happening was after living this creative life in the last two years of writing that book and then having it published and then more marketing it and thinking about it, I knew I had to go back to work. I sacrificed everything in that that last. I said to my husband, I need a year. I have to finish this now. And one year turned into two years. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had to go back to work. But I also knew at the same time, after living life as a creative, that I couldn't go back and do exactly what I had done before. When that company sold to Hearst, I did not join Hearst. Rather, I started a consulting company that helped brands reinvent. And then Hearst became a client for many years and I had other clients. But once I lived life as an author and devoting myself to uh, creating something and birthing something new and living life on my own terms, I felt like I couldn't go back and embed myself in someone else's business and someone else's strategic strategic problems that needed solutions in the same way that I had done it before. So I was, again, very unsure and uncertain about what exactly I would be doing next. But I just stayed at it every day. And through speaking engagements, a the CEO of a company that I had once worked with, I thought, well, I won't mention it on the, on the call, but on this um, podcast, but it's a very prominent U.S. company. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, maybe I could do a project for them. They serve women. And I had that on my radar, but I also, it was a large public company. And I also knew they were doing so many things that I was probably intriguing, but a little grain of sand. And so I I was very surprised when suddenly I got an email from their CEO because she had read Saturday's Child. It had nothing to do with my business 
strategic skills or anything like that. She had read Saturday's Child Mm -hmm. and was so touched by the book and the meaning and the and the power of it that she invited me in to speak to her employees about my business expertise infused with my creative journey. And of course I said yes. And then in working with her team, I really spotlit the lessons that I had learned from immersing myself in the world of storytelling, that despite having been a chief innovation officer, I never really knew until I wrote a book. And that was another light bulb moment for me, uh, just like the first one, where I realized that there is so much wisdom in the literary world that all writers know, and that much of it I had to learn or relearn or focus on in a new way when I was writing Saturday's Child. But I realized that 98% of the population is never going to write a book. So they don't know it. And with that kind of light bulb, I created a talk with the five key lessons that I learned. Mm -hmm. And I called it, authorize it, think like a writer to win at work Mm -hmm. and life. And that kind of light bulb moment, and I'm summarizing it. I'm not saying it all came together in 10 seconds. (laughs) Right. It's a process. (laughs) It's a process. Process. It takes yeah. twists and turns and thinking and revising and editing, but that's where it landed. Mm-hmm. And I realized when I gave this talk and the CEO of the company was interviewing me and it was live streamed to employees and it was resonating that I had kind of found my zone of the strategy and creativity and designing a life and the professional and the personal and everyone just wanted more and it was so highly rated as one of their best talks and it was live streamed to employees all over the world and I realized oh I can keep doing this so I had never thought about taking everything that had come before in my life like building blocks and mashing them up together to create something new that had true tremendous value for the people who were listening. Mm -hmm. And once I got that idea, that led to reaching out to other companies with a program like this. Like if you have talent resources, I'm your speaker. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'll talk about. Here's how it will energize your employees. Here's how it will shift their perspective. Here's how it will help them live up to their potential and improve your results. And then more people People agreed. And then one of the people that heard about it films LinkedIn learning courses and Mm -hmm. said, wow, this is so original and fresh. I'd like to film the course. So I, again, said, sure, sure. Yeah, you you never, uh, we never say no to any great opportunity. (laughs) Never say no. Never say Um, no. And then I realized, oh, well, now... I have to go deeper. If I'm going to do a course, I have to go deeper than that first talk, which was, you know, just answering questions back and forth. Now I have to have more depth within each one of those five lessons. And then it hit me, well, I better write the book and then distill it into a course because it doesn't make sense to do the course first and then make it a book. So I I started all of that and the pandemic with all of its global misery and fear and economic woes and personal woes, there have been silver linings from isolation. And being here gave me the time and space to jumpstart the next book and fil- film the course and do the course. So something that it m- might have taken me two years or three years to actually do all the work for, I did in one and started and learning and development and L and 
R&D virtual workshop business that helps companies, global ones, uh, domestic ones, just have the right conversations and shape the stories they need to tell as every business and every conversation is changing. Right. And that's now where I'm going. Now you know where I've been (laughs) and where I'm going. (laughs) The unsexy secret of growing sales is that not everyone is great at strategic planning. But did you know that you are 42% more likely to achieve your income goals if you have a system that motivates, tracks and improves your progress on a daily basis. The Personal Sales Planner is that very intuitive and holistic sales planning tool which can help you break down your lofty income goals into manageable milestones and doable daily actions. And guess what? You have to spend just 10 minutes with it every single day. So grab your sales planner from bit.ly slash psp-37. The link is given in show notes. It is the only tool you will ever need to do your sales planning. So grab your link from the show notes. It is bit.ly slash psp-37. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, of course, so Deborah, it it is now all sounding so intriguing and interesting that uh, I am like on the edge of my chair to (laughs) actually know what that thought process is, what that uh, concept is which you are talking about, which enables people everyday people, ignorant people like me probably who are not able to put out their thoughts on paper or on the digital screen. So how do you empower people to acquire that thought process of a writer? How does it help them in an entrepreneurial situation as a business leader? So writers innately understand story structure Mm -hmm. and story structure reflects life, which means life is like a story. So if you understand the five lessons. And there's so much information. What I don't want to do is overwhelm the listener, but writers are non-objective observers. Mm -hmm. Uh, At the heart of every story is a story question that's being answered. So for the listeners, it's not really just storytelling at work. In order to get the answers that you need to shape the stories you need to tell, you have to think about it like story asking. And so one takeaway for readers who want to think like writers is to ask open-ended questions. And I will use dialogue in any book or any movie or series that we've all been binge watching (laughs) this last year. Right. Writers don't ask, they don't make their characters ask each other closed questions because the the dialogue then doesn't go anywhere. Did you have a nice weekend is a yes or no answer. But if one character says, what was the most interesting thing about your weekend? That Mm -hmm. gives the other character the opportunity to enter into a dialogue and then reveal something about themselves that wouldn't otherwise be revealed. And that's the nature of the back and forth and give and take of dialogue. So I think many people in their conversations at work often are at a loss of work words because they feel like they need to have all the questions and all the answers. And when you lose your train of thought or you lose your words, it's usually because you're afraid or nervous. And so what I would encourage people to do is to prepare in advance. There's hard work in all of this, in all things is hard work. And so I would prepare in advance. And there's a tool in the book that helps to shape the story you'd like to tell so that you have your talking points in advance. But then you must ask questions of the other person that are open-ended and give you some feedback so that you can live in the moment of the conversation. And if you frame it that way, you become less nervous, less fearful, and know that the 
answers that you're seeking or the information that you need to elicit in order to solve a problem for the client or boss or anyone that you're in conversation with, you need to hear what they have to say and that will spark something in you and the magic lives in the follow-up to that conversation in real time. The lessons in the Mm -hmm. book to keep in mind is that the the first one is embrace the narrative arc. Work is nothing more than people on a collective quest. And there are cycles that are a part of every story. And there are cycles that are a part of every workday, every project, every situation. And I'm not sure how much time I can tell you the the four (laughs) cycles. Well, I'll briefly tell you the four cycles. Yeah, brief will be. uh, Something shifts in the landscape. That's the first cycle. There's a shift. Okay. Then the second cycle is there's an instability because Mm -hmm. now you're in new terrain. Something's changed. You need to do something new and there's a period of instability because you're not sure. That's where uncertainty kicks in. And then there's a period of darkness. Everything gets worse. And if you think about any binge watch, you yeah. you have, it always happens this way. Yes. And then at the end, there is some sort of transformation because we're all part of this narrative arc. Mm. And within that, we're all on our own character arc of growth. We go into situations and we emerge from them differently. So right. if you're aware of the cycles, again, you're much less fearful because you know what's going to happen next and you understand that it's happening for your own benefit. So the lesson number one is embrace the narrative arc, Mm -hmm. understand the cycles, and know it's all about action, your action, and then your response to the action. Mm -hmm. And your response to the action is the one of the biggest determinants of your success, how you respond. Right. And so that's a key point in, in the first lesson. The second lesson is writers understand the effect of characters. So the second lesson is understand okay. your characters. The people around you, even your antagonists, will always teach you something about yourself you wouldn't have otherwise known, and they're there to serve you. Yes. And if you think about it that way, again, you eliminate a lot of the fear. And then there's a need for conflict. A story without conflict is a giant bore. You have an intentional action and there is always something in the way of that action. Yes, there's a roadblock. There's always a roadblock. And Mm -hmm. so navigating that and understanding that and how it helps you is just a reframing that writers understand that everyone else if they do, will live up to their potential more. And then uh, the final two lessons are seeking the unconventional and stepping into the unknown. Mm -hmm. And just like I took those first steps into the unknown and was in a darkness period because I didn't know where I was going or even at many points what I was doing, it's necessary because that's where the new awaits. And when you seek the unconventional also, that's where counterintuitive answers await because no one likes to see the ending. Everybody wants the ending to be a surprise. Stories and life are full of plot twists that you never would have anticipated. So, you know, that's the basic foundation. Mm -hmm. And then within the book, there are tools that help non-writers to follow a template to shape the stories they need to tell so that they'll have more success. Because I think as we all know, whoever tells the best story wins. Absolutely. That's a great finale to end with that everyone wants to have a story that succeeds. Yes. Yes, yes. For sure. and, and everyone is looking for a happy ending. But I guess the story lies in the journey, the process, the 
roadblocks, the navigating through the node roadblocks, the conflict and overcoming it, that's what creates the entire story. For sure. It is the journey. But when you when you take that and you apply it to the work world, mm -hmm. you do have to deliver a happy ending for mm -hmm. the person that you're talking to. Your solution has to make someone else's life better. And if you can make them see that, then they will come along with you mm -hmm. and you will win. Yes. So in real life, not every story has a happy ending, although every ending is a new beginning of some sort. Yes. Yes. You may not feel that it's happy and certainly terrible things happen every second of, of every day. But as they do, there is something that is learned or needs to be learned or is enlightening or illuminating for something else in everything that happens. But when you're at work, the focus is on solving a problem for someone else. You're the, the hero or the heroine. I call them the H of your own life. But at work, you're a supporting character and mm -hmm. your job is to provide the answer and solve a problem for someone else. And when you shape your stories in a way that does that, you win. That's a great thought to conclude on that everyone is here to solve a problem. You mm -hmm. are in a supporting role as an entrepreneur, as a professional, mm -hmm. you are actually solving a problem for someone out there. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Whether it's your customer or your client or, client. or your boss or even your employee. Absolutely. If you keep yeah. that front and center, you will advance more quickly than if you don't. Absolutely. Wow. So thank you so much, Deborah. Those were some very profound thoughts that you have shared and very deep thoughts that you have shared. And uh, please let us also know how people can uh, get your book, uh, authorize it, because it sounds so good. I'm sure there will be many people who want to grab a hand on it. Well, I hope so. And I will forward you the information. Mm -hmm. And thank you again for helping me to have my thoughts and my voice and this work, which brings meaning to a lot of people travel so far. So I appreciate that. And you have solved a problem for me. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. It was lovely having you for the podcast today. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today for this episode. I'm sure you were able to find some key learnings and takeaways from today's episode, which will help you grow your business to the next level. And if that's the case, make sure that you share this episode with two of your business buddies because you never know that they might also find some insight which will help them in their business. Knowledge, after all, grows by sharing it further, right? So do share it with two of your business buddies. Also, if you like Ace the Says podcast, consider sharing five star review and rating on apple itunes because that will help us take the podcast to many more women just like yourself who are looking to find sales success in their business also it will mean the world to us especially myself and my team who are putting loads of efforts to bring this podcast to you and lastly remember to connect with me on instagram at roshni underscore baronia because i would love to know more about you your business and what is it that you need help with when it comes to selling so connect with me on instagram leave a review and share the podcast with two of your business buddies i will meet you next thursday stay tuned and stay safe and happy selling